Ola, and welcome to Vive Nutrition Radio, the first ever Spanglish podcast where you will hear interviews with the top minds in nutrition, performance, fitness, and health in both English and Spanish. Here is your host, expert registered dietitian, Andres Ayesta, on a mission to help you take your nutrition to the next level. Hope you're ready for this. Let's dive right in. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Viva Nutrition Radio. This one is a hot one because we have um, I have a pretty important big announcement to make because I have my friend and colleague and now co-host and podcast sidekick for Viva Nutrition Radio. His name is Antonio Castillo. And this was not an easy find because, you know, as a, as a bi- Spanglish and bilingual uh, podcast, you know, it's not easy to find somebody that is one an expert in nutrition, two, a dietitian, three, a badass, and four, that speaks both English and Spanish. So it was not it was not an easy find, but um, I wanted to introduce you guys to to Antonio. Antonio, why don't you tell uh, the audience a little bit about yourself since you're gonna they're gonna be getting getting a little sick of your voice all the time here on, on the podcast. Fuego, fuego! What's up, people? How's everyone doing? Just want to bring some of my Dominican Caribbean lifestyle up in here. So excited to be talking with Andres tonight. He's also an expert in nutrition. He knows everything that it comes to it. He's always learning too. He's a great nutrition coach. So excited to be on Viva Nutrition just because I've been listening to this podcast. I get a lot of valuable and actionable items off this. So I'm excited to be part of this community and be a co-host for it. So That's just awesome. get ready for a lot of random noises to come out of me and just some great information too. That's awesome. So why don't you tell the, why don't you tell the, uh, the peeps listening in a little bit about you and, and uh, kind of like your background and maybe like 30 sec- your 30 second elevator speech so they know a little bit more about you and they say that you're not full of shit and you actually know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, perfect. So just so everyone knows, Tony Castillo, um, both of my parents are from the Dominican Republic. I was born in, here in the United States in New York, uh, raised in Florida. And I did my undergraduate down at FIU, Florida International University in Miami. So I picked up some Cubanism there, drink coffee at three o'clock in the afternoon. And I still live. Don't suggest that for everyone. Uh, <laughs> then I went to go work at the University of Florida, where I worked with Olympic athletes, a football team. And it was an amazing experience. From there, I actually went to go work with um, a pro baseball team, the Toronto Blue Jays. And now I started my own private practice and super excited to be here with you. That's awesome. Yeah, that's that's a great introduction. So yeah, guys, like, you know, Antonio knows his stuff. And uh, we're very excited because what we're starting today is like this this kind of series of a conversation that I call, we like to call them chit chatters or chit chats. And they're going to kind of come in between kind of like interviews and things like that. And we're going to dissect specific topics down to provide as much value that we can for you guys. And we're going to really dive deep into the weeds of like specific uh, topics. Um, and, you know, we'll dive right into like, you know, the, the first one we're going to cover, but essentially that's what this podcast is going to be. Now, keep in mind, this is a bi- that bilingual episode. So it seems a little long, but that just means that we're breaking it down into two parts. So if you're listening to this and you're a Spanish speaker, but also understand what we're talking about at this point, because you speak also English and one is in Spanish, you just need to make sure you scroll all the way to the second part uh, to listen to the second part on Spanish. So let's get started, shall we? Um, today's topic is a really cool one, which is actually going to be about uh, protein because it's a pretty uh, common topic. It's something that a lot of people ask about. And, and for some reason, I, I don't like to talk about it too much because I feel like it's, it's something that everybody talks about. But at the same time, I think the right information is not put out there. So why don't we start by defining, let's start with the basics. Let's start with protein one-on-one. So um, we're going to talk about like the, the requirements and how much protein you should be consuming and all that kind of stuff. But why don't we just kind of tell the audience a little bit about what protein is first. So they kind of have a good definition to start off. Shall we? Protein is pure gains, right? That's what everyone says. That's the first thing they hear. They're like, I'm just going to get jack ripped just by eating protein. That's the first thing they hear. That's the first thing that comes to mind. You go on any like website that talks about muscle building or weight loss or like go for protein. That should be your only macronutrient. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's slow, let's slow our roll there and think about what we're doing and how that affects our body, right? So for me, I, the way I like to define protein and the way I like to explain it to my clients is it's a building block, right? And I like to think of it as a Legos So the only way you build a house, right, is by using those bricks. So kind of like a Lego house, if you're a kid, you need 20 of these bricks to actually make a full protein, and that's what's going to help you build muscle and recover. 
Okay, that's a good definition. The way the way I also like look at it too is 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 uh, it's kind of like a proteins are imagine like this big chain and like every single one of those like links actually make up a full protein. And proteins is like you know like Antonio said it's it's the building blocks of of your entire body structure. It's essentially what allows you to recover, and it does help with the gains. Of course, it's if they're required for the gain, so you you're not fully <laughs> wrong there. If you read something like that, and um, but but I think a lot of people have a misunderstanding of how much we need to be consuming. We see a lot of like, you know, fitness coaches recommending, you know, insane amounts of protein on a daily basis to make up for like the lack of carbs or lack of fat and things like that. So we're going to dissect some of those things down. So now protein, obviously it's not all created equal, right? So they're all different kinds of sources and, and, and different kinds of um, places that we find a bit. Did you mention something about like 20, uh, 20 pieces or 20 different kind of like blocks that make up this, this entire thing. So can we, let, let's dive more into that because those are what we call like amino acids, correct? That's right. So those 20 amino acids, studies have shown that the top three that are going to help you are what you find in the BCAAs or branch chain, chain amino acids, which are leucine, isoleucine, and valine. And as we both know, leucine is probably the most important out of all those. That's the one that turns on that muscle protein switch. Yeah. So what are your, what are your thoughts on, you know, branch chain amino acids? And yeah, so I think, so those are like three, um, that, that a lot of people talk about because obviously there are supplements that are made out of, of that specifically, you know, when you think about amino acids, yes, there's 20, but then you think about splitting them up into what we call essential and non-essential. And for, for you guys listening in essential, when we talk about essential nutrients, it's something that your body requires to have from from food sources because it cannot make it up internally it cannot make it up or it cannot process it or, or produce it internally in the body versus things that are non-essential which are what we're going to call your non-essential amino acids which are things that your body can produce in its own whenever it doesn't obtain it from the diet so the B, the bca is like you're saying antonio there there are three of them that are involved specifically in muscle metabolism and um they are the ones responsible for kind of orchestrating like what we call muscle protein synthesis which we're going to talk a lot about in this podcast about this this specific topic which is you know your body's ability to to produce more muscle proteins that can help you recover and regenerate muscle mass and and recover in some of those things so if we think about proteins we always need to start to think about 20 amino acids that are usually what the human body um processes and uses and there's essential which they're going to be about 11 of them um and then there's nine of them that are essential which is the ones that your body cannot make and the ones that you need to get from food sources um that's the thing the way the best way that we can kind of describe it now to answer your question what do i think about bcas i think they're they're hyped up um because i you have to really look at you know what is like your total protein like intake on a daily basis like bcas is not this automatic thing that you take in right like you know a lot of people is like oh just 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 drink bcas i remember like, <laughs> well it's funny because you there's i remember there's like this one trainer that literally all he would do is like you know you need to gain weight just just go in like you know grab like the bcas and like put like four scoops of bcas on there <laughs> I'm like, those yeah, are always like, my favorite right <laughs> yeah like how that's good yeah like that's gonna do anything right it's just essentially just gonna throw in amino acids into amino acid pool so what do you think of this? Like, what's like the, the typical, what, what, how, do, how do you describe it to people or to, to, to athletes that come to you and ask you about, you know, BCA specifically? Yeah. So the way I like to describe BCAs is kind of like a band aid. So as we talk, we're going to talk a little bit more about muscle protein synthesis and keeping that switch on and how important meal timing is. Right. Um, so BCAs are kind of like a band aid. If you can't get protein within three to four hours, it's that band aid to kind of hold it over until you can get actual whole foods. So again, I always would suggest whole foods first, but if it's something you can't find and for some reason you're stuck on a deserted island with BCAAs and you're trying to get gains, you know, just take a scoop. <laughs> yeah, that's like the, the main thing behind it. So yeah, there and there there are three of them. So they're leucine, isoleucine, and valine, which um, they need to actually be working in sync all together. So that's why you see a lot of products that kind of have them. But the most important thing you need to ask yourself is that you're getting enough of the essential amino acids all together. You know, are you getting enough protein throughout the day? Because again, BCA supplements and research is actually very inconclusive to show that it's not necessarily conducive to increasing muscle mass automatically just because you have them. They're just kind of like part of a bigger thing. So, so I think that's like the, the biggest thing that you need to understand. Now, if we switch, we switch over and talk about protein sources from food. 
they're all, like I said earlier, they're not all created equal. So, you know, you have like your, your animal based sources and you have your uh, plant based sources. I think that's the way that we both learn how to kind of like split them up. And, and what really differentiates them when you think about when you learn, when we learn it from school, it's like the high bio biological value proteins and the low biological value proteins, which is like that's the low biological is the plant based and the high bio biological value is going to be like the ones that are animal based. Now, that doesn't mean that they're good or bad or like that's how you kind of split them up. It's just essentially the makeup of amino acids that that compose that specific protein. So. Why don't we kind of dive a little bit more into like the, the protein quality part of it? Because I know you love to talk about this stuff. Yeah. So that high biological value and that low biological value, right? So what does that mean to our listeners? Who's going to be like, oh, I'm going to go to our grocery store and be like, hey, is this protein high biological value? Where can I find that on the nutrition facts? Last time I checked, that's not on there, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, it doesn't really tell you that. I wish we, I wish it is like, okay, like here's, here's the breakdown of all like the, the, the way that you can kind of describe them. That'd be way easier, right? You just go to the store and be like, oh, okay, great. This is high biological value. I should definitely be eating this. <laughs> uh, so what makes high biological versus low biological? And the way we describe it, as you said earlier, is like plant-based versus animal-based. So when we talk about that, we, we see that leucine is actually higher in animal-based. So one of those three branch chain amino acids and one of those three essential amino acids is leucine. And that's the one that turns on that muscle protein synthesis. Mm -hmm. So what happens is that we only need a smaller amount of that meat-based protein versus a plant-based protein to get that leucine switch on. So I, the way I like to talk about it is that a good portion of protein should be about the size of the palm of your hand, right? So that's about how much meat protein you would need. So let's say that's from chicken, meat, fish, pork, whatever that looks like for you. Compared to what you need in beans or rice, you need almost double the amount just to get the same amount of leucine or of that protein to turn on that muscle building switch. So it's not that you can't turn it on if you're vegetarian or vegan. It's just, you need a lot more. So you need to focus in a lot more on your diet and dial in. Yeah. There's a really interesting study and, and I'll try to figure out who, who was like, who, which one was specifically, but it actually, they looked at the differences between um, a whey protein and I think it was a rice or brown rice protein and their effects on muscle protein synthesis. And essentially guys, when, when, when we're talking about muscle protein synthesis, you think literally about it as a biological switch. It's something like, you know, it goes on and off. Um, and whenever you have enough amount, which, you know, those levels in losing, they're set around anywhere between 2.5 to 3.5 grams or so, depending on your size and many different things, things like that, which I think what you just said, Antonio, I think three ounces, which is about that palm size, it's really what's going to define that, that minimum requirement for somebody like average, like you and I, not, you know, maybe like for, for like an NFL athlete or so, it's a lot higher, um, but essentially, like, that's like kind of like the minimum threshold to be able to kind of hit that number. Now, you know, what, from the perspective of, of losing, which that usually kind of equals to about 20 grams of protein for, let's say, those three ounces. And, and we'll kind of like talk about that. Um, but that's obviously kind of like the main the main differences between them. And it's not like you're saying, like, it's good or bad. But what, what the study found was that, you know, what, when you have like a supplement with about 20 grams of whey protein, you would need to get about 40 grams of brown rice protein to get the same effect essentially on muscle protein synthesis. So it's like you're saying, you just need a higher amount to be able to kind of reach those same thresholds and to be able to kind of stimulate muscle protein synthesis to the same extent that you would do from a, for example, from a pro protein that is from like a high quality source or an animal based source. So and just to take a step back to your last podcast, this is why you should get a nutrition coach. They know these things. These are the things they study, right? This is what yeah. we love to do. So we just want to keep, you know, enforcing that. Like, this is what we like to do. We like to coach you on it, not give you a consult about it. And hopefully during these podcasts, you get that little snippet of information from it. Yeah. So, and again, the palm size that you were talking about, remember, it's your palm, not Shaq's palm or Abuelita's palm, because everyone has different size palms, right? Like, you, yeah. don't use your mom or girlfriend's palm or your partner's palm or whoever it is. Just use your palm because we don't yeah. want you to have more or less. Because if you eat like Shaq, well, we have something else to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I think that's that's a very important kind of distinction that you have to make. And we're not saying that you cannot have more than that palm size. That's just a, a reference standard for that. Um, it's just simply a, a way that you can kind of look at, you know, the amount of protein that you need to be consuming daily. Because here's the other part that we kind of switch into talking, which is also about protein timing. 
So it is not just about how much protein you consume in one setting. And it's also about how you time it on a daily basis, because here's what happens. So like your muscle protein synthesis um, or like there's like this concept called like, you know, anabolism and catabolism. So anabolism is when you're in a state in which your body is um, in, in producing or like in, you know, producing more, more, more proteins. And it's kind of like, you know, building things and catabolism is the opposite. It's kind of breaking things down to be able to provide energy. And it all de- depends on this concept that uh, we know as like um, nitrogen balance. And when you consume more protein that, you know, that what, or, or you meet your protein requirements on a daily be- basis, and we'll give you some practical applications that you can take away from that at the end of this. Um, but when you meet your protein requirements, what happens is that you enter in a state of like positive nitrogen balance. And when that happens, you technically uh, can be on a state of like anabolism or from the perspective of being able to build muscle mass and to be able to, to, to build more proteins essentially. So, but that's like a, a the way I, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that the best way to describe it is like, you know, promotion protein statistics goes in waves throughout the day. So it goes up when you consume enough protein and you enter that positive state and then it goes down to say, for example, you got a work that workout done. So the, the whole key behind, behind protein timing is just to make sure that you're always kind of turning on, turning on that switch, you know, right? So it's like that, that loosing switch that we need to make sure that we're turning on to be able to make sure that you go and then you get that curve up and it goes down again. It's not, the, the, it's not a bad thing that it comes down. You just need to make sure that you're kind of turning it on repeatedly throughout the day. Is that right? So I love that you brought that up. So just to give you one of the athletes I, I used to work with, I was trying to get him to gain weight and he's like, yo, bro. I just eat protein and I eat massive amounts of it. And this whole meal timing thing, right? The protein timing, it's like, hold on, let's take a break. Let's see how much you eat. So this guy would just eat like 16 ounces of steak and that would be his meal. And I'm like, what about your veggies? What about your carbs? Like, no, 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 just, just protein. And just, a, you know, the light switch, right? So if you go to a light switch and you push it up as much as possible, it's not going to make the room brighter. The room's going to stay the same, same light, right? So yeah. that's the same thing as eating too much protein. If you eat too much protein, it's not going to keep that light switch on longer. It's only still going to last three to four hours. So that's yeah. like another important piece that a lot of people are like, okay, so if I eat like a hundred grams of protein for breakfast, I'll be fine the rest of the day. Cause my light switch will be on all day. It's like, no, it still goes on every three to four hours. So just make sure that when you have that protein, you're not just like, oh, I don't need protein in this meal because I had steak and eggs for breakfast, you know? Yeah. And I think it, it, it all depends on many different kind of like the, the environment and the context that we're in. And, and eventually we'll talk about intermittent fasting and stuff like that. And how does yeah. that affect it? Uh, we'll leave that, that topic for a different time. But that is like a, a, a big, really important takeaway for, for people listening in that it's important to not just consider the amount of protein you're consuming daily, but also how you're timing that uh, on a daily basis. Now, we're not saying that if you have 50 grams of protein in one setting, like, I think there's like, what, do you, what are your thoughts on this? Because I think there's a lot of disconnect on how people see this. Like, you know, some people say it's like, oh, you're going to pee it out. And other people say, well, you're going to store it. Or people say like, you know, you're not going to absorb it. And you're going to literally poop it out. You know, what, what, what are your, like, what's your view on this? When someone eats, just to clarify like, the question, when you eat too yeah, much protein. Too much protein, protein or like 60, 70 grams, 80 grams. I really think it depends on what your goals are, how big you are. Are you a guy or a girl? There's so many questions going on in my head just based off that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I think, I think it depends, yeah, and you know, I, I saw this meme the other day. It's like, oh, ask a dietitian a question and the answer will be it depends because it really does. Yeah. Um, I really think who you're dealing with and what you're dealing with. So if we put this on, let's say an average uh, audience listener on this, right? let's say a male in his thirties um, trying to put on muscle mass. If they weighed, let's say between 180 and 200 pounds and they're eating 50 to 60 grams of protein, I'd want to look at what else they're doing. What is their diet they're eating? Um, are they following intermittent fasting? Right. Yeah. And so I, there's not a hundred percent answer I could give you just because yeah. I'm sure you say the same thing. It depends, right? Yeah. It depends on many different factors. And, and I think for, a, for a lot of people that really kind of consider and says, you know, you're going to have like, I'm going to sit down and have this like 16 ounce piece of steak. It's all about like, you know, like protein absorption. It's all about how your body's kind of using that at that, a specific, you know, timing, um, digestion. Like there are so many different factors and variables. What I can tell you though, is that you have to make sure that you focus on getting enough 
to support the needs. But then you also think about portion controlling depending on what your goals are. So this is the part that I, I a lot of times like we kind of struggle. And we'll, we'll, we'll switch over into this in the last part of this chit chat to talk about protein requirements and how you can calculate your own protein needs. But essentially, if you're a person that is trying to gain weight, um, and I see this all the time because you're trying to put on muscle mass and your caloric intake needs to be, I have a client whose caloric intake needs to be um, in the upwards of like 5,000 calories daily. So that's a ton of calories. And this is something oh, yeah. for a lot of athletes. Now, if you put uh, that client based on um, essentially like you may need to increase your protein a lot higher than what you would expect because like it's a higher caloric value. So, and, and we'll talk about protein requirements in a second, but you know, essentially he may need to have like 60, 70 grams of protein per serving for, or per meal, simply because of the fact that the amount of calories that this guy is consuming. So that makes a big difference. And so it really, like I said, like you said, it really depends on many different factors. And not only that, so someone who's trying to gain weight, right? You put them on that kind of protein, it can make them less hungry because as you know, protein makes you more sated or full or yeah. feel fuller longer. So you also want to play that balance as well. So someone who's trying to lose weight, maybe that high protein is going to help them feel fuller longer. So they're not having that food anxiety. Like, oh my God, when do I get my next meal? Is it three hours yet? Yeah. Or maybe someone like your client who's trying to gain weight, doing that 50 to 60 might work for him. But you go to someone else and you try that and they're like, I'm full for the rest of the day. So yeah. you have to kind of play with it. And again, that's why you find a nutrition coach, right? <laughs> yeah, that's very important. Now, so so let's actually jump into, because you mentioned something, a couple of things that are important, which is like, you know, when you're trying to gain weight or you're or, or trying to lose weight. So, and, and you mentioned an important factor, which is actually uh, hunger levels and, and satiety. Um, which a lot of people don't really see protein as uh, like a way to kind of stay full. They think about other things or um, they're not necessarily associated protein with that. So uh, how does that happen? Like, you know, what is like the, the, the main thing that kind of keeps or, or like that kind of like promotes like a higher state of like hunger or, um, or I guess like feeling more like satiated uh, when you have a higher protein intake? We're talking about like ghrelin and leptin and all that fun stuff. Well, not necessarily, but just like one of the things I think is just simply because of the fact that it's like the digest, like, you know, protein takes time to digest. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's, I think the main thing that what a lot of people may do that. Now, if we jump into like literally protein recommendations, like there's, there's like many different ways to do it. What is your process to kind of get to the protein needs? Let's get into like the nitty gritty details. Cause I'm sure a lot of people want to listen to that. Ooh, so macro calculations. Yeah, <laughs> everyone's mean, favorite, right? Everybody kind of steers away to talking about that, and and we coaches we we do it on our on, on the back end, but a lot of people sometimes like they don't understand why or how we actually determine this. And I think it's it's it. This it obviously will shed light on a, on a lot of um, people out there who's like you know making recommendations that are like insane. You know, I've seen. People like I've seen 150 pound females getting like 250, 300 grams of protein, which is like outrageous, you know? So what's your process for, for calculating those, like, you know, that specific macronutrient on, and depending on the goal of the person. So you can, you can kind of put up like maybe a case study or something. Yeah. So it's funny you mentioned that because I think we were on a a board together, like a, a discussion board and we both had different views. They were similar, but we both had different views of what our macros were. And that's so interesting to see, even us being so similar. It's like, why are, why are we so not different in that area, but we had just differences. And it's just like kind of based on what we do. So for example, I had an overweight player and his big thing, kind of like I was mentioning earlier, is just anxiety. He wanted to know when he gets to eat. He wanted to feel full and he just couldn't feel full. So not only do we u- utilize vegetables as well, but we also increase protein and fat. So we increase the protein because it's going to keep them full longer. We increase the fat because it keep them fuller longer. Um, so what I normally recommend depends on what sport they do or what they're trying to do. So this person who's trying to lose weight, I go between 1.6 grams to about 2 grams per kilo, per okay. kilo, not per pound. So, okay. so let's like, let's actually help people convert this because, you know, we live in the imperial system. So let's say for example, <laughs> you have a, we have a 130 pound lady. So the way you convert that uh, guy sitting in is you divide that by 2.2. So that gives you, okay. So your, your lady, we're just going to run round It's 59 kilos, but it just rounded up to 60 kilos. All mm-hmm. right. So what's the next step? You mentioned anywhere between 1.6 to two, depending on, so how would you determine if this person is like 1.6 or two? 
That is a great question. It really kind of depends on that person and what they like to eat and how often they can eat. Um, and I kind of look at that and, and see what would be better for their goals. If they're starting to be hungrier and they're not having more challenges, I go on the higher end of two. If there's someone that kind of feels full and they don't have much, uh, weightlifting or, or any sort of recovery needs for protein, I would go that lower end. So yeah. it really depends if it's someone like doing a desk job, I kind of stick to the 1.6 unless they are feeling very hungry. Then I kind of start going up. But if it's someone who's being very active, then I'll kind of go up to that higher two per, per kilo. So yeah. like you were saying, if it's 60, 60 kilos for that 130 pound case study, that's about 120 grams of protein. Yeah. Max. On the higher end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. On the higher end. So that'll be 120 grams of protein for that. And if you go down to like the lower end of 1.6, I put you at like maybe like 95 to hundred grams. So it's like, it's kind of having that range, right? It's kind of like being able to kind of have, those the, the specific core requirements and then i guess like we just kind of like and we'll have a conversation about carbs and fats but then we kind of like organize the the rest of it according to whatever goals of the person are going to be so so bottom line with this is like it's we, we don't you know it's this not an outrageous amount and this is what what research shows now let's finish out this part of the conversation to, to talk about like you know because we've seen like that a lot of people ask about safety of of extra protein and getting too much. And I saw, I saw a really interesting study, uh, a safety study, or it was just basically showing like any kind of side effects and things like that of going like above and beyond on high protein intakes. I think of the upwards of three, uh, 2.4, about to like 3.4 grams per kilogram, which, you know, it, it didn't really have a massive effect as far as like, you know, on health. It didn't, honestly, it didn't really, ha- nothing really happened. Now it's a really a need to actually have that higher protein intake. Uh, depending on on the requirements, so so do you have any kind of thing to add as far as like you know safety issues or safety concerns of like you know too much protein is too bad for you or too much protein is going to like get uh, have your like you know make your kidneys shut shut down or something like that? So no one can see us, but I'm I've been smiling the whole time you're talking because this is such a hot topic, right? They're like, oh, it's going to hurt your kidneys, it's going to damage your kidneys. It's like, okay, that's the old school thought, but have you checked the research recently? And as you said, the research is showing that it's not going to affect your kidneys. So I'm not saying you should go on an all out protein diet. However, you should be more conscious of what's out there. So I have not personally had any safety issues with kidneys unless they are doing dialysis. So yeah, Yeah, that's um, a different, you know, that's a different ball game. That's a different ball game. Right. And I don't think anyone listening right now is on dialysis. Well, if you are, are they still. yeah, you don't, don't go crazy with that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's important. Yeah. Just be careful on that. Yeah. So I think we kind of pretty much summed up like, you know, we, we can literally talk hours on, on protein, but I think we wanted to give you guys a, a quick kind of like, you know, uh, uh, kind of like an appetizer, what like you know, the protein recommendations and the conversations that we typically have as coaches and, and how can you or- understand and how to calculate your protein needs accordingly. Of course, you know, when you think about 120 grams of protein, it's also thinking about like, you know, where is that coming from? Because if you're a vegetarian or vegan, then that means that maybe your protein intake or your protein needs are going to be a, ha- a lot higher. So that's when we kind of need to start individualizing things and, and make sure you're personalizing your nutrition accordingly. So it's not a right or wrong answer. You just need to really find what works best for you. So, which is obviously our motto, you know, it's really finding what works for you. And that's why no cookie cutter programs are definitely going to give you that. So anything to add before we switch it over to like Spanish and we talk about, you know, the stuff in Spanish, Antonio. Honestly, just thanks again. So happy being here. And if you're trying to get them gains, make sure you go the right track, which is finding a nutrition coach and make sure you eat protein every three to four hours if you're looking for those gains, but don't overeat. And like you said, it's all about quality and timing, right? Like if you don't have that quality, you don't have that timing, you may not be getting the most out of not only your workout, but your day, your daily performance. And I'm not talking about performance, not only as an athlete, but performance as a human, right? Like you go to work nine to five, you want to make sure you're at your top level. Hey, this can actually affect you. Yeah, I think that's really powerful. Yeah, so we're, we're excited to have Antonio here, part of like, you know, as a podcast sidekick, so we can kind of have these conversations and it's just not me uh, talking <laughs> like a like a maniac in here. Um, makes it a little bit more fun to kind of like, you know, bounce around ideas. Um, so yeah, guys, thank you so much for listening today. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this conversation. Let us know what you think on the reviews. Uh, we'd love to kind of get your feedback if we suck or if we're doing a sort of a decent job. So I would love to, to hear your 
your thoughts on this. So uh, leave us a five-star review. That would be preferred um, and because that increases our visibility and people can kind of see Vegan Nutrition Radio the most. If you want to connect with me, make sure you follow me at Andres Ayesta on Instagram and um, make sure you follow Antonio at Antonio Castillo. Is it RD or what was like the tag? I'll RD put- underscore NFP. Yeah. 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 We need, we need, we need to work and on that. Only- tag, <laughs> and not only what you said about leaving a review, but let us know what you want to hear. Yeah. What is your, your topics on nutrition that you want to know about? It may not be protein. It may be fats. We don't know. Yeah. So it may just sure be you, recovery. Just hit us up. Yeah. Hit us up and let us know what you think. And we'd love to, to kind of dissect down different topics and, 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 you know, talk a little bit more about that. That's what we do. Cool. So, um, thanks you guys for listening in now, make sure that if you, if this is like the, uh, um, if you want to listen to this in Spanish, you want to recommend it to somebody, you just hit the slide up and we'll, uh, we'll continue in Spanish. If not, well, we'll see you guys next week. Uh, thanks a lot and ciao, ciao. No vemos. <laughs> All right. I'm going to continue to like record this and I'll just have my guy edit it out. Um, yep. So we'll just kind of go straight to Spanish. We'll just kind of try to remember the, the same flow of things that we kind of had on there and, and we'll go from there. Okay. I don't even remember the flow, but we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be perfect. So mm-hmm. we just need to kind of have the same conversation. So, all right. Three, two, one. Hola amigos, bienvenidos a Vive Nutrition Radio. Um, Le habla Andrés Ayesta, host y eh, anfitrión para, para el programa. Eh, me encanta de verdad verlos otra vez aquí con sus su sonrisas escuchando este episodio de hoy porque les tengo una sorpresa bien interesante y es que tengo, um, ya no van a escucharme nada más a mí hablando, sino también van a tener la oportunidad de escuchar a otro experto en nutrición eh, un gran amigo y colega nutricionista y con el que he trabajado por bastante tiempo eh, su nombre es Antonio Castillo un dominicano así que vas a escuchar la sazón dominicana de su acento <risa> de su Spanish así que bueno le sin más nada agregar Antonio va a ser el podcast psychic no sé cómo literalmente se dice eso en español pero va a ser como que el co-host o co-anfitrión y vamos a hacer esta este tipo de, 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 de episodios en el cual vamos a hacer lo que llamamos el chit chat que simplemente son conversaciones pequeñas en donde vamos a hablar de, de, de eh, ciertas conversaciones o ciertos eh, temas nutricionales que son bastante interesantes para, para ustedes lo, los eh, la audiencia eh, y responder preguntas y, y darles literalmente eh, lecciones que puedan aplicar el día a día entonces eso es lo que Antonio y yo vamos a hacer pero sin más nada que agregar les, les, les presento aquí a Antonio Antonio por qué no, no nos dices un poquito más de ti y, y cómo llegaste hasta acá y, y obviamente un poquito sobre tu, tu background y, y tu historia ¡Dímelo, mi gente! <risa> <risa> Muchas gracias, Andrés. Feliz de estar aquí contigo. Eh, como tú dijiste, yo voy a ser Robin y tú eres el Batman. El platanero <risa> llegó con el arepón, ¿ok? <risa> eh, muchas gracias por tenerme. Muy feliz de estar aquí. Eh, como dijo Andrés, mi nombre es Antonio Castillo. Mi familia es de República Dominicana. Voy a traer ese sazón de, de por ahí. Tú sabes, mi gente. Uh-huh. Eh, Nací aquí en Estados Unidos, pues a veces tú me vas a oír con el Eli La, que está un poco confundido, pero ahí está André para ayudarme, como quiera. <risa> eh, English. Sí, <risa> pero me crecí aquí en la Florida, eh, trabajé en Miami, que ahí aprendí un poco de español cubano también, el cafecito, el portadito, la croqueta, mm-hmm. es parte de la vida. <risa> claro. Y después fui a trabajar en la Universidad de la Florida con atletas de la Olimpiada, también con el fútbol americano. Y después también trabajé con el béisbol o la pelota, como lo conocen, el platanero, el salami, lo bueno, arroz con habichuela para mi gente. Y ahí trabajé con muchos dominicanos, venezolanos y aprendí mucho sobre cómo la nutrición te puede impactar a tu vida y tu rendimiento. Y ahora no importa si eres pelotero o si tú eres alguien que trabaja en un escritorio todos los días, la nutrición importa. Y nosotros claro. vamos a hablar de eso y vamos a estar aquí hablando de eso. Y muy feliz de estar aquí y para adelante claro, buenísimo, de verdad que, que, te, que estoy bastante emocionado de tener a Antonio acá, así que bueno como tú, como, como dijo, tiene su sazón dominicana así que eso es algo que, que realmente va a traer bastante energía, bastante emoción al, al, al programa, así que bueno este, como hoy queríamos empezar con, con un, un tema que es bastante interesante, especialmente para, para las personas escuchando en, en países de, la, de, de, de Latinoamérica este, yo sé que este podcast siempre sale también en YouTube sale en iTunes y de, de distintas maneras, pero vamos a hablar de un tema que, que es eh, que, que es bastante como es interesante que es lo que es la proteína y la proteína es algo que nosotros 
eh, obtenemos y vamos primero a definirla. Yo primero voy a hacer mi definición y después voy a decir a Antonio a ver qué, qué, qué quiere compartir él también. Pero la proteína es un macronutriente y eso es lo que vamos a hablar no solamente de lo que es, sino los distintos tipos y, eh, y las distintos como eh, la de donde se obtiene, o como que lo ya decimos en inglés, los sources, a veces, a veces se me van las palabras en español, eh, pero los sources, eh, de dónde viene, y como también hablar del hecho de que todas las proteínas no son iguales, cada quien tiene sus su distintos tipos y ese tipo de cosas, entonces vamos a, a, a tratar de darle un poquito más de, de recomendaciones en cuanto a cuánta cantidad consumir, qué son cosas importantes que tienes que considerar y cosas como esas. Entonces vamos primero a definirlo, son proteínas, la proteína es un macronutriente, ¿verdad? Y la proteína es, de la manera que me gusta describirlo, es como una cadena en donde cada eslabón de esa cadena representa un, eh, el, un aminoácido que, re, que es básicamente lo que hace o lo que construye una proteína como tal. Y creo que, Antonio, tú lo describes como si fuera unos, como unos Lego, ¿verdad? Es como uh -huh. básicamente como, como los bloques que, que forman un, un Lego, que, que pues, todo el mundo escuchando sabe que son los Lego, así que no creo Exacto. que haya problema. Cuando tú eras niño o cuando, si tú conoces a alguien que, que construye casa, ladrillo, ¿no? Claro. Y de eso hay 20 que nosotros vamos a hablar, lo que son esenciales y después lo que no, no se necesitan tanto. Uh -huh. Y para darse definición también, vamos a recordar qué es proteína, porque yo me recuerdo cuando yo estaba trabajando con cierta gente, ellos dicen, ah, no, pero el arroz y el pan es, es proteína. Y dije, bueno, vamos a hablar de lo que es la proteína, de dónde viene la proteína. Y como tú estabas diciendo, que tú lo dices como una cadena, yo digo que es como un ladrillo. Y uh -huh. para nosotros las proteínas son los carnes, los peces, lo, el pollo y también puede hacer de habichuelas o caraotas, yo creo que ustedes lo llaman, ¿no? Sí, sí, ¿eh? Eh, y pueden venir de arroz, pero nosotros vamos a un poco más de eso eh, más tarde. Claro. De cuál es la diferencia en el arroz con eh, frijoles o caraotas uh -huh. comparado con el carne. Sí, exacto. Eso, y eso es importante porque, el, 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 como dice Antonio, hay, hay, no todas las proteínas son iguales. Y como primero, como, como dijimos, para, para que entienda la definición, es, es básicamente lo, los ladrillos o, o los eslabones que, que forman una, una, una estructura más grande. ¿okay? Y la proteína es esencial para el hecho de que es necesaria para el crecimiento muscular. Es esencial para, uh, obviamente, muchísimas funciones, crear de, eh, proteínas y estructuras y tejidos nuevos en el cuerpo, lo cual se requiere de, de manera fundamental en la dieta. Y es una de las cosas que, uno de los macronutrientes, yo siempre hablo que es mi macronutriente favorito porque es uno de los más importantes. Nosotros podemos manipular los carbohidratos y las grasas de ciertas maneras para sobrevivir, pero una cosa que siempre se mantiene constante siempre es la proteína y eso es algo que no puede faltar. Entonces, eh, ya hablamos entonces de la definición, pero como les dijimos, no todas las proteínas son iguales y podemos, la, manera, la mejor manera que podemos definirlas es que tenemos proteínas que son esenciales y proteínas que son, o, o aminoácidos, que obviamente es lo que, lo que forma esa proteína o la estructura, hay aminoácidos que son esenciales y otros aminoácidos que son no esenciales. Lo esencial o un nutriente esencial es un nutriente que el cuerpo necesita de la dieta o necesita de comida para poder sintetizar, para poder tenerlo en el cuerpo. Mientras tanto que un, algo que no es no esencial es básicamente algo que tu cuerpo puede producir de manera interna cuando no hay, eh, cuando no se obtiene directamente de la, die de, de la dieta o de la comida. Entonces hay nueve aminoácidos que son considerados esenciales que básicamente es que tú los tienes que obtener de la comida y adivina que el, la, las carnes y cosas como esas tienen la mayor cantidad de esos, de esos eh, aminoácidos esenciales, mientras que las proteínas de origen vegetal, que son obviamente lo que decía Antonio, las legumbres, caraotas, como le decimos en Venezuela y cosas como esas, van a representar esas que quizá tienen algunos de esos, de, de esos aminoácidos esenciales, pero no todos conjuntos. Entonces a veces es importante entender que, que uno requiere un poquito más para, para causar ciertos efectos y vamos ahorita a hablar de, de varias de esas cosas. Pero la mejor manera que puedes... Eh, que, que se pueden diferenciar es esas proteínas de alto valor biológico, que son esas proteínas animales, y proteínas de bajo valor, valor biológico, que son las proteínas eh, vegetales. Entonces, esa es la mejor manera de diferenciarlas y cómo son creadas de manera diferente. No es que unas sean buenas o malas, sino simplemente como están, como es el, el, la estructura que ellas tienen, básicamente como, como de los aminoácidos entre esenciales y, y no esenciales. Más o menos, eso, eso más o menos como tú, tú estás de acuerdo básicamente con eso también, ¿no? El 110%, Andrés. Y bueno. hablando de eso, lo aminoácido esencial, los lo tres más importantes que nosotros hablamos, es la lucina, isolucina y valina. Uh -huh. Claro, normalmente eso tú lo puedes encontrar en, en la comida, pero también a veces lo venden en suplementos. Uh -huh. Y lo, lo llaman el BCAA o Branch Chain Amino Acids, o aminoácido uh -huh. 
de Branch Chain. Ese Spanglish va a salir fuerte hoy. Tranquilo, tranquilo. <risa> para, eso, para eso estamos en este programa. Que igualito que acuérdate que la gente que escucha en español usualmente también tienen un poquito de, de inglés cortado por ahí. Así Exacto. que seguramente. <risa> sí, entonces los, los BCAs o los, los, los BCAAs o BCAAs, que, que básicamente son tres, ¿no? Son tres que son como, como Antonio, la, 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 la leucina, la valina y la isoleucina, que son como que son ciertos aminoácidos que, 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 que dirigen la orquesta, la, la orquesta, siempre eso lo dije en inglés, pero creo que se murió como decirlo en español. No, sí, está bien, sí. Sí, la, pero es que básicamente como que dirigen todo a nivel muscular, en, en lo que llamamos el metabolismo muscular, en como nosotros, una cosa, hay una palabra, una frase importante que, que, que deberían todos las personas escuchando aprender, que es la síntesis proteica o la síntesis de, de muscular proteica, que básicamente en inglés se llama MPS, o Muscle Protein Synthesis, que es, es simplemente el, el, la serie de reacciones que ocurren para que el cuerpo empiece a producir proteínas para recuperación y para que el músculo crezca. Especialmente, bueno, de esta manera, si tú vas al, al gimnasio y haces cierta cantidad de ejercicio, lo que va a pasar es que vas a, a producir cierto quiebre muscular. Entonces, lo más importante que uno tiene que enfocarse es que tiene que recuperarte y para eso uno requiere de cierta cantidad de proteína. Entonces, esos tres aminoácidos que se encuentran en distintos... Eh, 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 fuentes alimenticias, pero también esos suplementos van a ayudarte a eso. Ahora, el problema está en que mucha gente empieza a tomarse esos BCAAs como si fueran el elixir para el, para el crecimiento muscular. Y es donde, donde viene la parte que nosotros no estamos de acuerdo, que es que no es que literalmente tú te estás tomando ese, ese líquido, y creo que lo dije también en la parte en inglés, que conocí incluso un coach que decía, no, él decía a sus atletas, anda a tomarte cuatro, cinco, seis este, scoops o, 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 o porciones de, de, de los BCAAs, porque mm. él creía que eso es lo que causa es automáticamente te va a hacer que empieza a aumentar la masa muscular, que no es así, ¿no? Es una de las cosas también que estamos hablando antes, ¿correcto? Claro, el 100%. Y como nosotros, lo que yo le explico a mi cliente y también con la atleta que yo he trabajado, es que tú lo quieres usar como una curita. Una curita es un band-aid, ¿no? Uh -huh. Y es que si no puedo comer algo cada tres o cuatro horas, y vamos a estar hablando de eso un poco más tarde en esto, pero que si no puedo comer una comida de verdad, después puedo utilizar el BCAA. Uh -huh. Pero como tú dices, no en el elixir mágico que tú te lo bebes y tú vas a salir al otro día con los cuadritos para ir a la playa. Tiki, tiki, tiki. No, 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 no. <risa> eh, no funciona así, ¿verdad? No es que no, no, sí. no vas a estar poniéndote un poco de masa muscular simplemente <risa> tomaste esos BCA. quiero La manera que, que tienes que verlo es como que es algo que, que, que se agrega al, a lo que llamamos nosotros como una piscina de aminoácidos que tienes, que está, que tienes en cierto momento dentro de la sangre. Entonces, eso es aditivo a lo que estás consumiendo, pero no significa porque si no consumes nada de, de comida, obviamente eso puede ser, eh, te puede ayudar, pero simplemente tienes que, que verlo de, en, de, de una perspectiva un poquito más grande y verlo como como que ver todos los factores realmente que afectan eso. Entonces, son tres aminoácidos que son esenciales especialmente para el metabolismo muscular, como dijimos, pero no es que esos suplementos te van a ayudar a automáticamente eh, hacer que, que crezcas desde el punto de vista muscular. Entonces, eso también es algo que, que tenemos que, que, que más o menos entender. Ahora, vamos a meternos en la parte de la diferencia que existe entre las proteínas animales y vegetales. Ah, no, ya tenías, tenías otra. Espérate, sí, una cosita nada más. Eh, como tú dijiste que eso fue un entrenador que le estaba diciendo a la gente que hay que tomar 5 o 6 cucharadas del BCAA para volver al último podcast que tú hiciste en inglés y en español eh, eso porque somos los coaches o entrenadores de nutrición, estamos aquí para ayudarle y estamos educados en eso, que a veces claro. hay gente que yo creen que usando más suplementos lo que le va a ayudar o en realidad no sabe cuál es la función claro. y ojalá este tiempo que tú y yo estamos haciendo este chat, chat la gente puede aprender cuáles son los suplementos que se pueden utilizar pero como somos lo, otra vez el entrenador de nutrición, estamos aquí para ayudarle y para seguirle para adelante, ¿no? Claro, eso es lo más importante. O sea, recuerda que siempre es, es, es como que tiene, tienen que entender que a veces uno trata de hacer esto por lo que uno escucha en las calles y uno escucha por, por los amigos o por, eh, o, por, o por entrenadores y eso realmente uno siempre tiene que tratar de... De, de, de tomar las recomendaciones de alguien que, que sepa o que alguien que estudió esto para que entiendan cómo funcionan las cosas y no, no necesariamente tomen decisiones que puedan afectarte no solamente tu rendimiento deportivo, sino también obviamente puedan afectarte a nivel de salud, que es lo más importante. Entonces, son cosas que tienes que considerar. Entonces, hablando de los distintos tipos de proteínas, como, me, como dijimos al principio, no todas las proteínas son creadas de la misma manera, ¿verdad? Entonces, claro. ¿cuáles son algunas de las cosas que tenemos que tener en cuenta cuando se trata de eso? ¿Cómo, difer cómo las diferenciamos? ¿Por qué unas proteínas son de alto valor biológico y otras son de bajo valor biológico? Ya habíamos hablado de lo que son los aminoácidos, uh -huh. 
pero a veces no entendemos mucho lo que es la cantidad y cosas como esas. Tú, yo, habías hablado algo de lo, la, la manera que tú enseñas cómo la, a las personas las cantidades proteicas que tienen que consumir, algo con la palma de la mano. ¿Por qué no nos más o menos cuentas un poquito sobre eso y cómo tú enseñas esas partes? Claro, y también lo que dije en inglés fue el valor de, de proteína no se puede encontrar en la etiqueta de, de la comida. Eh, es bien difícil para saber si este pedazo de carne es mejor que otra del pollo o, o como uno sabe, aunque dice proteína y dice cierta cantidad, pero va a tener la lucina que va a ayudar ese switch que nosotros hablamos del MPS para aprender para que siga haciéndose masa muscular. Y lo que yo le digo y se lo enseño a la gente es usar la palma de su mano, no el palma de la abuelita, ni de Shaquille O'Neal, ni de Messi, ni de Ronaldo. No, no, no. Palma tuyo. Que es, es bien difícil porque a veces tú ves el plato de tu amigo y dices, miércoles, déjame un chin de eso también, déjame ver qué sabe eso. No, eso no es lo que tú necesitas si tú quieres crecer de masa muscular, ¿no? Es claro. tu palma de mismo gruesa y tamaño. Sí, eso es lo más importante. Entonces, y, y es como, como dice Antonio, incluso yo, yo hice referencia a un estudio bien interesante que busqué, encontró que cuando tú haces, eh, el estudio lo que buscaron es la diferencia que existe en, en MPS o, el, o en la síntesis proteica, que cómo puedes cómo prender ese switch. Y básicamente trataron de entender qué pasa cuando consumes este, un, una proteína de suero o whey protein, que es usualmente la mayoría de esos prote de suplementos proteicos que existen en el mercado. Y la diferencia que existe en una, una proteína que es de, de origen de, de vegetal, que era en este caso creo que una proteína de extracto de, de, de arroz integral o de brown rice protein. Entonces básicamente lo que buscaron era la diferencia que existía entre ellos dos. Y lo que encontraron es que los dos pueden causar ese, ese pueden prender ese switch, pero necesitaban más de, de la proteína del arroz, una cantidad más elevada, vamos a decir que eran como 20 o 40 gramos comparado con 20 gramos que se necesitaban desde el punto de vista de, de, del proteína del suero o el web protein. Entonces, no es que sean buenos o malos, sino simplemente, especialmente para, si tú eres una persona que está escuchando y tú eres vegetariano o vegano, estas son cuestiones que tienes que entender. Porque si, si, tu, su, si tus necesidades proteicas las mantienes la, manera, la, misma, la misma cantidad que, por ejemplo, una persona como yo, que yo soy carnívoro y como de todo tipo de carne, como Antonio también, quizá no vas obviamente a obtener los resultados que estás buscando porque tu, tu, tus necesidades proteicas tienen que estar un poco más elevadas por ese mismo, por ese mismo hecho. Entonces, eso es algo que a veces no, no, no mucha gente entiende porque es simplemente el hecho de entender cómo, cómo saber estructurar los tipos de proteínas que estás consumiendo para, para obviamente buscar el resultado que estás buscando. ¿Algo más que agregar en esa parte? No, exacto. Si tú eres vegano, vegetariano, tú tienes que comer casi el doble de arroz con frijoles, arroz con bichuela, arroz con carabota, como tú lo quieres llamar, que como para alguien que no. Y eso quiere decir que tú tienes que estar más enfocado en tu nutrición. Eso claro. quiere decir que tú tienes que buscar a alguien que sabe de eso y sabe cómo colocar esas comidas en tu dieta para que tú puedas tener esa eh, ayuda o apoyo del switch de masa muscular. Claro, esa es la mejor manera de ponerlo. Y, y ahora hablando un poquito también que nosotros mencionamos en, en, eh, hace un rato, hablando de lo que es la, el, el, el timing o la, cómo nosotros estructuramos la, la cantidad de proteína que nosotros consumimos durante el día. Porque hay gente que dice que, bueno, hay, hay personas que, que simplemente se, se enfocan en obtener una cierta cantidad de proteína, pero no se enfocan mucho en, la cantidad, en cómo lo, lo estructuran durante el día. Y lo que hemos encontrado es que el, el timing de la proteína, particularmente de atletas, influye mucho en cómo el atleta se recupera. Y la razón por la cual esto existe es porque el hecho de que quiero que se imaginen que, que el, el, el muscle protein synthesis o, o la síntesis proteica ocurre como que en, en ondulaciones como de, eh, como uno, o sea, como que sube y baja. Vamos a decir que, por ejemplo, cuando uno se despierta en la mañana, el switch de, de la proteína está completamente apagado. Si tú, por ejemplo, comes unos huevos, este, yogur viejo o algo así como eso, que tienen una cantidad adecuada de proteína, entonces ese switch se prende y sube la curva eventualmente quizás tú vas a entrenar en la mañana. Uh -huh. ¿Qué pasa? Que obviamente ese switch se empieza a apagar otra vez porque eso es lo que pasa cuando hay daño muscular. Si tú, por ejemplo, en ese momento no, no agregas una, una, uh, una dosis proteica o algo que venga de, 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 de la alimentación, ese, ese switch se mantiene apagado. Entonces, ¿qué es lo que pasa? Que obviamente no estás promoviendo la recuperación muscular en ese momento. Entonces, ¿qué tienes que hacer? Si tú en ese momento te agregas 20 gramos de, de proteína que vienen, por ejemplo, de una proteína en suero, lo que pasa es que pasa, uh, eso se prende. Entonces, lo ideal es crear unas curvas que suban y bajan durante el día completamente y que no se mantengan bajas y que llegue la noche y la cena y te metas ese pedazo de carne, ¿verdad? la picaña, lo, las 16 onzas del New York Strip que te comiste en el restaurante y ese es el único momento que obtuviste todas tus cantidades proteicas. No, eso, eso es la manera como yo lo veo. 
el 100% y como yo dije en inglés también, yo antes trabajé con alguien que me dice, Tony, yo lo que voy a hacer es comer mi carne en la noche, eso es, me voy a comer mi pollo, todo el mundo pollo, con pechuga pollo y yo estoy bien. Y dije, mira, si eso es lo que tú quieras hacer, está bien, pero tú vas a tener el switch apagado hasta, que te, hasta, hasta la cena y no va a poder claro. ser la masa muscular. ¿Y para ti eso es importante? Oh, pero claro que sí, yo quiero tener, yo quiero estar ahí, yo quiero estar en forma, Tony. Y dije, bueno, para estar en forma, vamos a, vamos a tener que ayudar con esa frecuencia de proteína, ¿no? Frecuencia Porque vamos proteína. a tener que desayunar con huevos, vamos a tener que comer un almuerzo ligero, no tan fuerte, que, todo, que normalmente cuando tú vas a Dominicana, tú lo que ves es un plato normal, eh, arroz con habichuela o caraota con el plato entero y un poquito de pollo, después de la cena a veces un sándwich y yo sé que los venezolanos a veces les gusta desayunar arepas con queso, ¿no? Mm -hmm. si eso es lo, <coughs> lo que te gusta hay que agregarle un poco de por, por lo menos jamón o, o con huevos ¿no? Sí, para claro. que se aprende ese switch ya cuando tú te estás despertando claro. y eso es importante porque aunque tú crees que estás comiendo mucho, el switch de luz aunque tú lo empujas con toda la fuerza que tú quieras, no se va a cambiar la luz, se va a quedar a la misma altura. Después tiene que comer proteína con frecuencia cada tres o cuatro horas y no puede hacer una cantidad demasiado grande. Claro. Eso es lo que queremos evitar, porque hay veces gente que le gusta comer el pollo entero, pero eso no te va a ayudar para que se prenda el switch, porque se va a apagar como quiera cada tres o cuatro horas. Claro, eso, eso creo que es lo más importante que, que, que debemos como que enfocarnos en el hecho de que, que la síntesis proteica ocurre. Usualmente el, el límite y eso que nosotros hablamos es de unas 20 a 30 gramos de proteínas por serving, dependiendo de tu tamaño. Una persona obviamente como yo, este, pero si estamos hablando de alguien más, más grande, un, un atleta que es un poquito más, este, más musculoso, eso tiene que obviamente esa, esa necesidad de aumentar un poco más. Pero como referencia, para, por ejemplo, una persona que pesa unos 150, 170 libras, eh, más o menos unos 60, 70, 80 kilogramos, hoy es, las cantidades proteicas por comida no, no deberían exceder más de 30, 40 gramos, sería obviamente lo ideal. Eh, y eso es a lo que más o menos tenemos que atenerlo. Y como dice eh, eh, Tony, la, la, la mejor manera de, de, de verlo de esta manera, o, o la mejor forma de, de, de ver cuánto es eso desde el punto de vista visual, es simplemente tú ves la palma de la mano, de tu mano, y, y simplemente ves, porque eso son más o menos unas tres onzas de, de, por ejemplo, de carne, de pollo, de pescado, ¿verdad? Y esos tres onzas usualmente son equivalentes a 20 gramos. Esa es una manera muy sencilla de verlo. Entonces, si tus necesidades son 40 gramos, significa que tienes que hacer dos palmas de la mano de, de proteína. Otra manera también de verlo es como, por ejemplo, una, una paca de cartas, de cartas de jugar, de póker. Entonces, una paca de cartas más o menos de ese tamaño y ese grosor van a representar más o menos unas tres onzas de proteína y así es una manera más fácil de, de nosotros poderlo verlo de manera visual. Entonces, esa es una manera fácil de, 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 de más o menos calcularlo de esa manera cuando estás sentándote a comer una, un, un almuerzo, una cena o, sí. o una, un desayuno. Y cuando estamos hablando también es la cantidad de la proteína que a veces, como se digiere en tu cuerpo, te vas a, se te va a quitar el hambre, ¿no? Uh -huh. Y si tú eres alguien que quiere aumentar de peso, aumentar de masa muscular, eso es bien importante. Claro. Dijiste que tú tenías un caso de alguien que come 5,000 calorías al día y tú le pones 60, 80 eh, gramos de proteína por comida y eso es lo que le está ayudando, pero del otro lado hay alguien que necesita comer más y tú le das esa cantidad y se queda lleno o sin hambre por el día entero. Después claro. también, eso porque tiene que tener un entrenador, un coach de nutrición, que sabe de eso para poder como jugar con tu dieta un poquito para que tú sigues teniendo el switch prendido, pero puedes comer esa cantidad de calorías. Claro. Y el otro lado, alguien que quiere perder peso, tú quieres que siga lleno y no con hambre el día entero, que tenga una ansiedad. Pues esto tú puedes utilizar la proteína un poquito también. Claro, es como simplemente como, como lo vas ajustando, porque como, como dice Antonio, la, 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 lo más importante es tener en cuenta de que la proteína también ayuda mucho con la saciedad y sentirte lleno y sentirte full y eso es algo que para alguien que está tratando de perder grasa eso es algo que ayuda muchísimo a controlar un poquito la ansiedad y la cantidad de comida que estás consumiendo diaria sin embargo si cambias entonces la cosa a, a alguien que está tratando de aumentar masa muscular dependiendo de los niveles calóricos si está una persona que está consumiendo casi 5000 calorías la proteína va a ser bastante alta pero tienes que manipular un poco más lo que son los carbohidratos y las grasas que eventualmente hablaremos un poco más de eso ahora para finalizar Tony vamos a hablar un poquito quizá de lo que es este la parte de, de recomendaciones nutricionales cuando se trata de base de proteína, porque creo que las personas escuchando siempre quieren más o menos tener una idea de cómo calcular eso y estoy seguro que muchos tienen sus su, su cuadernitos en mano para asegurarse que puedan anotar esto. Así que, ¿cómo, cómo calculas tú, por ejemplo, la cantidad, de la, el, el total de proteína que uno debe consumir para una persona más o menos que pese unos, eh, creo que mencionaste en, el, en, en la parte de inglés, una persona que pese 150 libras? ¿Cómo, cómo, cómo calcularías ese tipo de cosas? 
Espérate, estoy buscando mi cuaderno para escribir esto también. <risa> <risa> no, normalmente lo que nosotros, bueno, lo que yo sugiero es entre 1.6 a 2 gramos de proteína por kilo. Después nosotros usamos a alguien de 150, después tú divides eso entre 2.24, ¿no? Que eso sale en kilo sí. y después el doble de eso. Claro, eh, sería en cuanto, como 1.6, ese serían como unos 96 gramos, ¿no? Más o menos sería sí. de, de, de cantidad y, y si fuera el, el, el índice alto sería de 2 de gramos por kilogramo que serían eh, como unos 120 gramos diarios, ¿correcto? Correcto, sí, lo estoy, sería, lo estoy sería chequeando con mi cuaderno, no te pures. 107, el 1.6 y por 2, es 134, vamos a decir. Ok, 134 gramos. Entonces eso es un rango que más o menos tú lo, como que lo estructurarías y dependiendo de la, de, de la persona, porque eso es la parte, otra, otra parte de, de personalización y, y, y hacer algo individual. Que si eres una vegana o, o vegano o, o alguien que sea vegetariano, quizás esos números van a ser un poco más altos. Por el simple hecho de que no necesita más la, 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 la calidad proteica, tiene que ser mucho más alta, que es una cosa que también nosotros tenemos que enfocarnos y ver que no toda la proteína es igual. La calidad proteica es algo que es muy importante considerarlo también. Sí. Entonces eso también como que algo que, que, que podamos eh, enfocarnos. Creo que eso es más o menos lo que queríamos eh, comentarles hoy. Creo que esta es la parte que ya, ya más o menos queremos tratar de mantener esto, estas conversaciones este, debajo de los 30 minutos, que creo que lo logramos hoy, así que creo que vamos muy bien. Este, ¿Algo más que quieras agregar, Antonio, en, en, en la conversación que tuvimos hoy antes de, de, de cerrar y, y despedirnos de, nuestro, de nuestros oyentes? La cantidad, la calidad y la frecuencia que come proteína. Si tú no tienes esos tres enfocados, tú no vas a llegar a tu meta nutricional, lamentablemente. Eh, yo creo que nosotros te podemos ayudar en eso. Tú sabes, encuéntranos por Instagram, mándanos un, un mensaje, pero en realidad... Tiene que enfocar en eso. La proteína es bien importante, no nada más para que te sientes lleno, pero para hacer tu masa muscular, para que tú puedas ir a la playa en verano y enseñar tu cuadrito. ¡Uepa! ¡Hasta <risa> ahí! ¿No, verdad? Claro. Muchas gracias por tenerme, André. Un, un, no. un placer de hacer tu Robin. Claro que sí. Como de verdad que van a escuchar muchísimo más, Antonio. Estoy seguro que su sazón les va a gustar mucho y se, se convierte en un podcast un poquito más interactivo y más divertido que yo simplemente hablando. Eh, yo no soy tan, tan festivo, así como Antonio. <risa> tener esa parte agregada aquí. Entonces, bueno, sí, como les, como les digo, Antonio, si quieren, eh, para más preguntas y cosas que quieran eh, que les respondamos, asegúrense de seguirnos en Instagram, nuestro... Mi, mi Instagram es directamente mi nombre, Andrés Ayesta, y por ahí van a conseguirme también uh, en el, el tag de Antonio, es Antonio Castillo, RT underscore NF, NFP, y pueden obviamente conseguirlo también por ahí. Igualito todo esto va a estar en, el, en las notas aquí del programa aquí abajo, así que cualquier cosa y pregunta que tengan me avisan. Eh, otra cosa importante que le queríamos pedir, como un regalo que nos pueden dar para nosotros, déjenos un review, déjenos una, eh, una calificación preferiblemente de 5 estrellas si es posible porque eso aumenta un poquito más nuestro rating si aumenta un poquito más la visibilidad lo que nos permite a nosotros llegar y dar más valor a muchísimas más personas y podamos ayudarlos de mejor manera, así que de verdad que les agradecemos muchísimo eh, que hayan estado aquí con nosotros, eh, bueno sin más nada que agregar, eh, se despiden Antonio y Andrés en Vivi Nutrition Radio y nos vemos hasta la próxima ¡Nos vemos! You have been listening to Vivi Nutrition Radio couple of things before you take off. If you enjoyed this episode, please, I would love to get your feedback. So feel free to drop down a review and I will be forever grateful. Also, if you like this podcast, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We have it on iTunes, Spotify, or Google Play. And lastly, if you would like to receive a freebie from me, make sure you sign up for our newsletter at www.vive-nutrition.com. See you guys in the next episode. Ciao, ciao.